Now then, back to your notes. Uh, it's one story, we only hear it in three parts. Those three parts are Sunday after Christmas, at baptism, the temptation in the wilderness in Lent, and in between, you've got the quotation from Isaiah in the synagogue. Next line. Who is going to who was going to do these things? These things. Luke seven. Uh, if you want to read it, Luke seven. I'm just going to tell you what it is. Luke seven, verse eighteen twenty three. John the Baptist is in prison, and he has his followers. His followers come to see him in prison, and his followers tell him that this man Jesus that John baptized is doing these marvellous things. He can't be the Messiah, can he? Now, there are two schools of thought. One school says John knew Jesus was the Messiah. And the other thought says John did not know Jesus was the Messiah. That's why this quotation here, John sends two people to Jesus to ask him, are you the Messiah or do we wait for somebody else? And these two men go to Jesus and say, uh, are you the Messiah or do we wait for somebody else? And Jesus doesn't give an answer. He puts on a show of healing. Can you find that one? Around about 18, 7, 18. The disciples of John reported all this, these things to him. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, are you the one who is is to come or are we to wait for another when the men had come to him they said John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another Jesus had just then cured many people of diseases plagues and evil spirits and had even and had given sight to many who were blind and he answered them go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. Okay, now the answer comes right at the end. The men asking the question doesn't tell them no answer, he puts on a show of healing, then says, now, go and tell John what you've seen and heard. He will understand that I am the Messiah. Okay. Right. Next line in your notes says, the important phrase in Luke 14, 23, um, Luke, it's Luke 3, uh, no, sorry, Luke 4, 14, 23, is where he's quoting from Isaiah. The important phrase is to set free those who are oppressed. That's a subtitle of my book. The problem is, in English in the Bible, we don't say the Christ, except on two occasions. One of them is when um, uh, Jesus comes to Martha and Mary and um, Lazarus had died, and Jesus comes to see Martha first of all, and Martha says, if you had come before, my brother wouldn't have died. And then Jesus talks about the resurrection. I am the life, I am the resurrection. Do you believe this? And she says, listen carefully, she says, yes, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, and somewhere else the same. But everywhere else in the Bible uses the word Christ. And that's a problem for the English. Because we think Christ is a name. Now, if Christ were a name, we would have Joseph Christ, Mary Christ, and Jesus Christ. But we don't. Christ is not a name. It's a function. It's a job. His job is to be the Messiah. That's what the Christ means. Your notes say, the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One by the Spirit. Okay. 
And then the important phrase is to set free those who are oppressed, which applies to both healing and casting out evil. Using the Holy Spirit, Jesus went around doing good. That's what the Acts of the Apostles say. And the, the Gospels are full of preaching the good news, healing the sick, casting out evil. If you leave out healing and casting out evil from the Gospel, there's not much left. There's a bit left, yes. But a lot of the Gospels is about healing and casting out evil. So they must be important. There's a line in italics just above the number 2. 1 John 3, 8. The reason Jesus came was to destroy the works of the devil. Okay. It's important to remember that. And number 2. Our concern today is mainly about inner healing, often called healing of memories. Inner healing is God's love flowing through us. As it flows, it heals. What stops his love from flowing through us is our lack of forgiveness. Now then, love is the most important word. Forgiveness is a very important word, not as important as love, but it's almost as important as love. 